Okay, so in this presentation, we're going to go over ribonucleic acid, RNA, and the process in which RNA is created, which is called transcription. So let's go ahead and get started. So ribonucleic acid, first of all, RNA ribonucleic acid. Here's a picture to kind of help you compare and contrast some of the very basics of DNA versus RNA. You may know DNA is a double helix. Well, if you look at the picture, RNA, ribonucleic acid, is a single nucleotide, a single strand of, of, uh, of nucleotides chained together. Well, it's a nucleic acid. RNA is a nucleic acid, and all nucleic acids are made from smaller subunits called nucleotides. And in the picture, you can, you can see that a nucleotide has three basic building blocks to them a phosphate molecule, a sugar molecule, and then one of the various kinds of nitrogenous bases. And so uh, the sugar, DNA has a sugar by the name of deoxyribose. RNA, the name of the sugar is called ribose. And notice RNA has four nitrogen bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. So uh, here's a different nitrogen base. Uh, we're, we're used to seeing T for thiamine if we studied DNA earlier. Well, thiamine exists in DNA molecules. However, uracil exists in RNA molecules. So uh, just notice that uracil is kind of replacing thiamine in the world of RNA. Ultimately, we're going to discuss briefly uh, uh, the three basic types of RNA. So let's go ahead and get started with what's called messenger RNA. So here's a, a very simple diagram of kind of a cell. In, uh, in the nucleus on the left, inside of the nucleus, we have a double helix piece of DNA. Outside the nucleus is the cytoplasm, and here's a ribosome drifting around in the cytoplasm. So mRNA is what we're going to call messenger RNA from now on. The M stands for messenger. Well, you know what a messenger does. A messenger is going to make a copy of some kind of information and deliver it to another, uh, another individual. And so in this case, the reason it's called messenger RNA is DNA holds the information needed to build a protein but the DNA is stuck in the nucleus. The ribosome is the actual builder of a protein. So there has to be a way to get the DNA information from inside the nucleus to the ribosome. There has to be a go-between, and that's what mRNA is. What mRNA does is it kind of makes a temporary copy of DNA. You notice in the animation, uh, a temporary copy, a piece of RNA, is exiting the nucleus and going towards the ribosome. The, once that happens, the RNA will arrive at the ribosome. And you might already know from studying biology earlier in our school year that ribosomes' jobs are to build proteins. Well, ribosomes build proteins, but they need a copy of the information from DNA in order to build that protein. That's the job of messenger RNA. Deliver genetic information to the ribosome. That way the ribosome can properly build a protein. So messenger RNA starts in the nucleus because that's where DNA is found. Messenger RNA is actually created in the nucleus. But the messenger RNA will then exit the nucleus through one of the nuclear pores and attach, uh, and attach itself to a ribosome. And we're going to learn more about this another day. So another kind of RNA I want to mention is what is called transfer RNA. You'll often hear it simply called T, tRNA. And in, again, my picture here, I have uh, a ribosome drifting around in the cytoplasm. And those three colored circles are three different kinds of what are called amino acids. Amino acids kind of have some strange names to them. You can see one in pink called leucine, one in orange called proline, one in yellow called serine. There's another amino acid by the name of methionine. There's another amino acid by the name of asparagine. So they kind of have some weird names to them. Well, the function of transfer RNA, the function of tRNA, tRNA, its job is to pick up an amino acid such as serine 
and deliver it to a ribosome. You might know that the job of a ribosome is to build a protein. Proteins are made from amino acids. And so again, what happens is a tRNA here in this case picks up the amino, the amino acid called leucine and the tRNA will transfer the leucine to the ribosome. And in this case, the leucine can be bonded with the other amino acid called serine. And the process simply repeats itself. Here's another tRNA that picks up the orange amino acid called proline. It's called transfer RNA because uh, transfer RNA will transfer the amino acid proline over to the ribosome. And now proline will be added to the growing chain of amino acids. That's what a protein is. A protein is a chain of amino acids. And so really what the ribosome does is once transfer RNA delivers the amino acid, the ribosome kind of links all the amino acids into a big long chain and we eventually call that a polypeptide and, and then polypeptides can make proteins. And so uh, the, the, the functional location of where we find tRNA is in the cytoplasm. Now all kinds of RNA are made in the nucleus but the functional location of tRNA is really in the cytoplasm. So next I want to mention a type of RNA called rRNA, and the R stands for ribosomal. And the reason it stands for ribosomal is because in the picture here you see ribosomes. If you recall, ribosomes are the most numerous, the most plentiful organelle within the cell. Well, ribosomes are actually made from long or I should say from big complex strips of rRNA. And so that's the reason why we're mentioning rRNA and the reason the R stands for ribosomal is because rRNA are the components of what ribosomes, it's rRNA is what ribosomes are made from. Now eventually we're going to learn today in this video a process called transcription and if you're in my biology class in a couple of days we're going to learn another process called translation. And when we learn transcription and translation, we're more going to focus our attention on messenger RNA and tRNA, but I did want to mention rRNA because ribosomes actually play a big role in these processes as well. So the process that I want to focus on for the rest of this video is a process called transcription. And in this process, uh, RNA, in this process of transcription, RNA is going to be created from a molecule of DNA. So here's a cell. Let's zoom on into the nucleus. And so here's a nucleus. Well, let's zoom on into the nucleus for a closer look. When we zoom on into the nucleus, again, we have twisted, spiraled, uh, double helix molecules of DNA. Well, let's kind of get a closer look at, at a single strand of DNA here. And so again, a single strand of DNA here, we see a, a double helix and notice Chargaff's rules, adenine pairs with every thiamine and cytosine pairs with every guanine. Well, during the process called transcription, an enzyme by the name of RNA polymerase is gonna break the hydrogen bonds between the A's and the T's, between the C's and the G's. In my animation, RNA polymerase is going to be symbolized by these scissors. Scissors, of course, are used to cut, and in this case, RNA polymerase cuts apart the, the, the strands of DNA. So now that the double helix has been separated, let's move on to step two. Step two, uh, remind ourselves that the nucleus, it's not filled with empty, hollow airspace. The nucleus is filled with a fluid, uh, much like the cytoplasm, fills up the inside of a cell. And floating around in the fluid of the nucleus are various solutes. And in this case, we want to focus on, uh, on nucleotides. There are nucleotides that are floating around, unpaired, free-floating nucleotides that are in the nucleus. And what happens? What we're going to do is we're going to perform transcription in this animation. Look at the top the top strand of ATT, CC, GAT, and so on. Look at the top strip of black DNA letters. From left to right, let's perform transcription. If there's a DNA A, an RNA U is going to match up. If there's a DNA T in black, an RNA A. 
The next one would be an A. The next one will be a G. The next one will be a G. The next one will be a C. The next one will be a U. Remember, there's no T's because we're building RNA. If you're wondering why some of the letters are capitalized and some of the letters are lowercase, I'll explain later. Let's continue performing transcription. Notice how there's a black DNA T. Well, in floats a red RNA A, and so on from left to right, down the entire chain of DNA that's been separated. And eventually we get to the end, and uh, this piece of mRNA is near completion. It's not complete. It's not final yet. Watch what happens next. So step three, that big strip of red RNA is going to break free. And as it breaks free, uh, what, what happens next is a process that I'm going to simply call RNA processing. Let's look at that. Step four. Step four, RNA processing occurs. What happens is uh, now I have to explain why uh, th there's uppercase letters and lowercase. In my key that just appeared, I want to designate the uppercase letters to be things called exons, and I want to designate the lowercase letters to be things called introns. What introns and exons are? They are portions of RNA. Introns are portions of unused RNA. Exons are portions of used RNA. And we don't really quite understand why this is, but there are portions of the RNA that are not used. We call those introns. In my animation, they're the lowercase letters. Watch what happens to the introns. The introns are removed the introns are removed. Again, we don't really quite understand much of why this occurs, but this is the pattern that we see. Now watch what happens with the remaining exons. The remaining exons bond together, and this is the final piece of RNA that was created from the black strip of DNA. So that was RNA processing, where the introns have been removed and the exons were kind of spliced and bonded together. And so step five, this final strip of RNA will kind of exit and go towards a ribosome. Well, let's actually, if we kind of focus this animation on messenger RNA, let's pretend that that red strip of letters was messenger RNA. Messenger RNA travels to a ribosome. And we'll go and follow that messenger RNA in a few moments. But let's, let's kind of finish up uh, what happens in the nucleus first. Step six, the DNA double helix recombines. And eventually, uh, this process can repeat itself. Uh, eventually, those animated scissors representing RNA polymerase can reseparate the DNA, make more RNA, and the process can repeat itself. Well, you know, let's go find that strip of red RNA that just exited. It went over to the right, so let's go find it. Well, I'm looking over to the right. I don't quite see it. Again, we're zooming around the nucleus trying to find it. Let's, let's keep looking. Here it is. So here is the red strip of RNA. Again, we're going to call this messenger RNA. Again, there are three types of RNA, but let's just talk messenger RNA for now. This messenger RNA is going to exit the nucleus and enter into the cytoplasm. Remember, the nucleus has little pores in it called the nuclear pores. And so there it goes. The messenger RNA has just exited the nucleus and into the cytoplasm. Well, let's go find it. Let's go follow that red strip of, of messenger RNA. So here's a ribosome, a cell part known as a ribosome. Messenger RNA will come on in and attach itself to the ribosome. What happens next is a process that we're going to learn more about another day, but the process is called translation. You already know from earlier chapter in the school year that a ribosome's job is to build a protein and it will accomplish that goal by performing a process called translation. In the process of translation, the ribosome will build a protein. That's something we're going to learn more about another day in another video, but I, I can always introduce it briefly right here. 
for those of you that would like a, just a real quick side-by-side -side comparison of DNA versus RNA, here you go. You know, look at the bottom on the left when it says the location of DNA is in the nucleus. Well, this is clearly referring to eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells have a nucleus. If you recall, bacteria are prokaryotes and they lack a nucleus. But this, uh, this diagram right here just shows some very simple uh, differences between DNA and RNA in eukaryotes. And so there you go. If you're in my biology class, you know, pause the video. Pause the video and try to answer these questions on perhaps a separate sheet of paper. I'd be happy to check your answers before school or after school one day. So go ahead and pause the video. Try to answer the questions. Good luck.